Okay, so in this video here, I want to go through how to uh, machine just this darker purple area that's shown here on the screen. Um, I'm going to go down full depth with the cutter, um, so therefore I have to take quite a, a small step over. My step over between cuts is four millimeters. And this is using a standard contour tool path with multi passes. You can see here the disadvantage of using this is that the cutter cuts fresh air just because I'm just concentrating on machining this little corner here. So you can see I've cut all fresh air, again cutting fresh air and just machining that corner off. And again, I've just pipped onto this corner and here. So um, not a very efficient tool path. I'm spending more time nearly cutting fresh air than I am actually cutting the steel itself. Um, so we want to look at using what Mastercam calls a 2D high-speed toolpath to machine this area. So I'm going to use area mill. Um, these traditionally would have been known as 2D high-speed toolpaths. So I'm going to pick my area mill. And for my machining region, and again, I'm going to switch to an isometric view. Because I'm machining an area, I want to select a face. So I'm going to unselect partial loop and just have face selected. So that means this uh, Mastercam is going to machine this now highlighted yellow face. For an avoidance region, I'm going to select this top surface on here. So again, make sure that I'm just on face selection, select the top surface as an avoidance region for now, and green tick. And I'm going to start machining from the outside. So again, uh, older versions of Mastercam, there would have been a separate operation called core milling. Um, this area mill is used to avoid a core, um, if you like, and approach this, you'll see when I generate the tool paths from the outside. So if I go green tick onto that, um, I want to make sure that I'm using the flat end mill tool. I'm just going to reduce my plunge rate maybe down to say 300 and I'll just put this in a comment here. Rough inner profile. On my cut parameters we'll see that this in comparison to contour it's a different set of cut parameters. So first of all the step over um, and the step over is 45% of the cutter. Now this will obviously depend on the steel that you're machining, the quality of the tool holder, and obviously the type of cutter that you have as well. Um, so I'm gonna put in a minimum step over of 3.5 and a maximum step over of four. So I'm allowing Mastercam to have a tolerance of between 3.5 and four millimeters width of cut. Stock to leave on the sidewalls, I'm going to put on 0.6 again on the sidewalls here, and I'm going to finish the floors just in this demonstration on here. Uh, linking parameters. So the depth again incrementally is coming off the surface that I've picked. The top of the stock I'll just leave at the moment is set to one absolute. The feed plane is three millimeters above the top of the stock and my retract plane is six. Okay, so if I was to just regenerate that tool path now, um, you can see here we've got quite a different type of tool path. Now the problem that I have is that you can see that I'm machining this area here. So I need to add additional avoidance regions. Um, I'm actually machining in this area here as well. So if I was to just back plot these first three operations here. So if I back plot that now, there's my face mill operation, my roughing the outside contour. And now I'm doing these 2D high speed machining strategies. But again, if I just increase my speed here, you'll see that I am actually machining away more than I want to at this particular tool path. So how do I modify that tool path then? So in other words, you can see that I am machining this area here and this area here, uh, which I don't want to. So I basically need to add those as avoidance regions. So again, I need to go into my parameters. And if I look at here, you can see I have my machining region is correct, but my avoidance region I need to add. So I'm going to add chains in this case. And again, make sure that I'm just selecting face. And the area that I want to avoid is now here and here. I'm going to regenerate it. 
And now you can see we have a much more efficient toolpath than this particular contour. You can see where I was cutting fresh air with the contour toolpath, that this 2D high-speed toolpath, essentially what it does, it identifies the regions that it needs to take off first with inside this tolerance that I have between three and a half and four millimeters. If I was to backplant this operation and look at the time taken for this one, this one is taking me one minute, 58 seconds, so guts of two minutes. If I was to backplant this operation, this is taking three minutes. Um, so I'm actually saving over a minute in my cycle time by using the 2D high-speed toolpath. Okay, one other area that I could make this slightly more efficient, and again, you need to be careful that we don't collide, but that I have some feeding down happening on here and here. So I have these feeds down um, as opposed to wrap it down. So I'm going to go to my parameters on that. I'm going to go to my linking parameters. And this time I'm just going to pick the top of the stock actually off the model. So that's the actual depth that I'm going to go to. And I'm going to put my feed plane down as one. So I'm going to wrap it down to one millimeter now above the top of the stock, which is this surface here, um, and then feed. So just regenerate that. Now, if I was to backplant that operation, you can see that I'm now down to one minute, 12 seconds. So I saved a considerable amount of time by reducing my feed. Again, if I look at the parameters here, one of the reasons for that is my feed rate, my plunge rate, which was the feed down was 300 millimeters a minute, but my feed rate is uh, 1,780 millimeters a minute. Um, so again, much more efficient. What I need to, again, be very careful of here and mindful of is that I am now wrapping down below the top of the actual stop that we're machining. So when I backplant this, it's essential then to check that I'm not colliding. So again, checking my stop collisions for collision. So I will stop at a collision. And again, I'm going to check for collisions between holder shank shoulders and cutting length and play. So you can see here, it just essentially takes the nicks off the corners and then does a very similar contour going around the outside. So again, if I was to compare the speed of this, which is 1 minute 12 seconds, which is my 2D high-speed toolpath, as opposed to a contour toolpath, which is 3 minutes, um, I've saved nearly two, two, nearly 2 minutes on cycle time, which is considerable. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is basically delete this uh, contour that I was just using to demonstrate the difference between the 2D high-speed toolpath machining this area um, and are using a contour toolpath. So I'm just going to delete that operation. So right-click and delete that operation. And finally, now just go to the parameters and I just want to make sure that my coolant is on. So just scroll down, find coolant and turn the flood coolant to on and save.